talk. Hey, 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 guys. How are we? Said I'll be back here. And I'm upstairs in my office. How are we? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm just seeing um, we connected. Hold on, I can see. I don't know. I don't know what's going on on my page. It says we're connected. How are we doing? I'm going to add my sister to the screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you know what I need? We're not quite what's ready. That? I was working away, doing my thing. I need I need my Oh, God, this one, them, I don't need the new one. Don't come yet. I had to order a new one mm -hmm. because this one did break. So I feel a bit dull. Hold on. Okay. Let me see if that's a little better. It's a little bit better, but I've taken the light. Hold on. That's it now. Can you hear me? Ooh. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So good evening, good evening, good evening. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. <laughs> afternoon, isn't it? For real. Oh, from this conversation from this morning. Ah, oh, there we yeah, are. Oh. I'm here. It's coming now. It is coming. So I just wanted to share this because I'm, I'm in the office. I thought, all right, let me just jump on StreamYard and do it from here. Mm. But I don't know. I don't know. If this is better or worse, I don't know. But anyway, we was having a conversation earlier. Mm. And um, that's it. I'm going to go to groups. So I want to just share to some groups so people can know that we're back on. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so those of you guys who are joining, if you are in any of the groups, we may not have your name or your details. And so above... Um, in the above the chat, there's got something that says um, something to do with StreamYard and that they need your permission. And if you just click click on that on that link, then um, your name will then appear on the chat, and then we can have an open and and, and frank discussion. I just need to clean up my glasses because yeah, I'm <laughs> That's better, but they're not clean. That's what happens when, you, when you, 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 you clean them on your clothes. No, just use a tissue. Anyway, so we were talking earlier because, you know, we were doing this live. And before I before we get into that conversation, I just want to remind everybody to join join us or join us tomorrow um, for the After Dark show. It's our anniversary. Um, and I was working. I can't believe before. it's a year. It's a year. It's actually slightly over a year. Wow. Slightly over. So uh, much has happened in that time. It's amazing. Yeah, so much has happened. And I think we've all grown. We've all developed. You know, things have changed for a lot of us. Businesses have started. Um, friendships have started. Um, as a result Everything. Of, of... Yeah. And so, you know, I'm really, really pleased. Hi, Amina. I can see you there. Um, hope you're well. I'll catch up with you later. Um, but yeah, so we were having this conversation. Um, I'm not sure if Yabba's coming on. Um, I hope that they do and a few of the others come on. But we were talking about um, how uh, how our relationships are affected by different things, different dynamics. And, well, they're affected um, a lot by our past, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Well, you see, the thing is, your environment, your environment is one of the, the one of the things that navigate you in your life, and so your past mm. environments are going to have a major impact on how you behave, how you think, um, and what you believe. Ultimately, it's what you believe. So, as much as you know, our our past there are parts of our past that we have to bring forward with us, but there's yeah. parts of our past that we, we need to maybe leave some of that behind because of the impact it's having on us as a community or as a people moving forward. And that's what I think is important to say. 
Um, mm -hmm. Because some of the things from my past, in terms of my values, in terms of some of the things that I was taught from my mother, uh, there's no way that, that I would be the woman I am today have, had I left those things behind. But ultimately as well, I think one of the things we have to remember is, is that there are things from our childhood that, that have done us no good as well but has yeah, had an yeah. impact on us in the community. But one of the things I wanted to, what, one of the things that we have been talking about fundamentally on, on the After Dark show is relationships and the relationship between the man and the woman, specifically between a black man and a black woman, because that relationship seems to be in demise. Yeah. And it's like, why? Why is it in demise? What what are the things that, that we need to learn or to grow from this? How do we change this situation? You know, how, how you know, and, and so when we were talking earlier, it came up about um, race, it came up about the media and how the media presents us. And to a certain degree, it then um, gives us a sense of, against a sense of less self-worth because of what has, what are we constantly seeing? Because if you mm. constantly tell somebody that they're rubbish or they're not they're good gonna at something. They're going to behave. They're going to behave accordingly. Absolutely. They're going to start believing that as a matter of fact when it's not a matter of fact. It's not true. Yeah, when I was younger, when I was younger, I used to get told a lot, I'm rude and out of order. Yeah, and I must learn to behave and so forth, you know. Even when I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. But what would have been better is if I was told what I was doing wrong right. and, you know, encouragement to correct me to do the right thing. And I think a lot of our parents, sadly, through lack of education, mm -hmm. did not do that, you know. that Their feelings would play a big part in it where, you know, they'd get upset and the next minute they'd be like, you know, just having a go at you and telling you off and then next minute the, maybe the belt will come out or the threat so I'm going to beat you if you don't listen or I used to get the one where you know I'd get the oh this is for last week <laughs> and this is for next week just in case I mean come on mm -hmm. what's that about? you know and then you grow up feeling like you're you're a rebel or you're just bad and then you start to behave a certain way you know and it reflects and then if you're not careful it carries on into generations after generations and it's really about breaking that cycle absolutely you know? yeah so it's about us moving forward and breaking that cycle definitely i think you've hit you've hit something that's quite interesting in terms of our parents because at the end of the day our parents did the best they could with the knowledge that they had mm. and 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 from what they were taught so you know I, I try and put myself back in 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 terms of the time that they were living in and when they came here um um when they came here it must have been really difficult it must have been challenging for them as black people coming from a foreign country, a hot country, where they're, you know, fruits and all of those beautiful things are accessible. Yes, there was poverty, mm. but their way of life was so different. And they came over here with this expectation of this place with milk and honey and, mm. and, and, and vibrancy and that they were going to make so much money and they were going to send it home. And then it, within the five year period, they would be back in the yeah. Caribbean that was the intention for most of those who came over in the Windrush time sadly that was not the case it was not no. the, ta ta the case but when they came here what they received when they came here was no dogs no blacks no Irish Irish that type yeah. of thing right so so there must have been because when you think about how our parents dealt with us there must have been some frustration because they're human beings, right? Some frustration to to be living in that kind of world and then have children as in a well foreign country. in a foreign country. Now, you know, I think that we we got to be realistic about, you know, yes, our parents, some of our parents didn't do well in their parenting. 
Mm. But we have to also remember they did the best they could given the resources that they And that's had. the key. That's the key yeah. right there, you know. Now, we have new resources, but we also have a new way of life. It's a European way of life. But my thing is, let's not forget what our parents have deposited in us, the good stuff. We can leave the bad stuff. And just it's have like, the good. Yeah, it's like eating and chicken and eating good. meat and throwing the board. Well, some some people <laughs> some do <laughs> not, all. not all I do yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not eating that or chicken batty no yeah. <laughs> we ain't eating that either <laughs> no <laughs> so if those of you watching you chicken might not know. chicken patty mm. but there you go but you know you know Facebook users saying this is a brilliant toilet we discuss this in our men's group example of love sex companionship most of them stated that they are only now learning about these things 40 plus absolutely we you know we have a disconnect with our history. I think that's mm. the fairest thing to say. There are some who have gone down the historian route and they understand and they know about the history. But the vast majority of people, 40 plus, there is a disconnect between us and our history and, mm. and the value system that we, our parents were raised with. A lot of us have lost it along the way. Um, I'd fa I'm sad, I, I'll be able to call out your name as a Facebook user, but I can't see um, who you are. Um, so if a uh, Facebook user, the person who left that comment about their men's group, um, if you uh, put it in... Uh, at the top of if, at the top of the link, you'll see a statement about Streamyard. If you click that, then we'll be able to see you. Um, I don't know what's going on really because I'm on I'm on Facebook on my own Facebook page, and I can't see Amina's comment that's come up here. So Amina's saying, when I had my African ancestors' results, my life changed for the better because you have to fundamentally know where you are who, where you are coming from. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right mm -hmm, you've mm -hmm. got to know your roots you have yeah. to know your roots yeah you have to know your roots and I think it's so important that we do and, and, and not only that but to give you that that thing of your your value what are mm -hmm. your values you know let me ask those yeah people who are watching, what are your values what do you value about life in terms of being a, a, a melanin person a person of color you know what are your values, your core values right about now? Because I think a lot of that has been lost along the way. And this is why we struggle um, in relationships now. I really feel that that's why there is so much struggle. I'm going to set up another page just so I can see who else is on. Yeah, Tell I'm just trying to like see that. as well. I'm just <laughs> trying to set mine up as well so I can see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, imagine Technology. that. Look, look I'm it telling helps. you what, I have learned so much. Um, I can do so much more um, since the lockdown with technology. My, listen, I've learned, I've learned a lot of things. I even, yeah. I even learned how to put a label, you know, to do labeling and things yeah. like that. You know, Absolutely. just the basics of it. Oh I didn't yeah, do what I was doing before. No, I mean, your camera's gone off. Either. As it, Camera. Uh, yeah, it's a bit temperamental. I don't know why it does this. I think Facebook's a little bit. There we go. Messing up today. I've got a webcam. Well, that's why I didn't really go straight onto Facebook. I thought I'd come via Streamyard today, because yeah. um, you know you can just do a little bit, a little bit more. So I'm gonna just try and see if I can find. Um. So that's my page. I can see that. Um, Mine's I'm, just taking long today. I want to go. Long. I want to go on to. Um, ah, now I can see myself. Ish after dark. Let's go into the after dark group. Let's see how it's it's showing here. There we go. Right, yeah, that's yeah. I can see two comments here. Mine's freezing. Mine's still loading because I've got. Okay. I need to clean this computer. To be honest with you. 
I've got so much things on it off late. Oh, I, they're all coming through now. They're hi, ladies. Through. Yes. Hi, yeah. hi, hi. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So as you guys are coming in, we are talking, we are talking about relationships, but we are going back to the fundamentals. What are the things that ha have been affecting our relationships? On the After Dark show, we have been talking about the issues, the hidden issues between men and women. And we could see that there is um, a big disparity, really, as to how we think and how we listen to each other. Mm. Um, I think the, the the men's perspective has come from like 40 years ago in terms of black British um, living in the UK, living with um, within the um, the social the council kind of social economic barrier. Um, mm -hmm. it, the, the men didn't come from it from a, a, a another level. It was quite a mediocre, uh, and, mm -hmm. and I say that with no disrespect, I say it with no disrespect, but they've come at a viewpoint of, um, and maybe that's where they were at, so that's where they've come from. But where yeah. the women have come from, I have to say, is from a higher standing point because they've come from from first of all you know culture what what is the culture what where are we coming mm -hmm. from you know what yeah. were we, how were we raised you know um and and Dillis especially being a Ghanaian woman mm -hmm, mm -hmm. looked at it and she and she was explaining from her perspective this issue with the relationship it's not even in her sphere it's not even something for her to even consider because it's not how she was raised um, and then there were other members from the the Car more Caribbean side who were also saying yeah that they were not in that structure of way of living it because the men were talking about um, having the women having children having a council place and the council giving them a place and the men not being able to live there and how it's caused the divide you know um, and now when the women get back she kick them out kind of yeah, thing you know yeah and it all so, depends on the man, doesn't it, as well? It does. It does. As as I explained, I think I explained last week, um, I I wasn't raised that way. My, my parents owned their home and they were all about, and most of our parents from the Caribbean, a lot, the vast majority own their homes, right? And yeah. so my parents were no different. My mother died when I was 11. And so... Um, in terms of that value, that that um, maternal value, that kind of just ceased as she died. My mother was mm -hmm. the glue. She was the thing that hold, held everything together. And when she died, everything kind of just went. Because the mother is like the, she's the one who actually holds the the, the, the family together. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah, Because I, I value my mum because um, she's she's always held the family together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bless her. Now she's at the stage now where we're now looking after her. Yeah. Um, but that that's just a natural thing because like, you know yeah. when you see your mum, when you see your mum looking after you all them years, she she sacrificed a lot for us. Yeah. You know, and now it's our turn to look after her, and we do it with no, there's no arguments, no qualms. It's just we're on it. You know, yeah, and that's, this is mum. We be. do it. That's you know? exactly how it should be. You know, so, you know, we we grew up, when I, when I fell pregnant, I had my son when I was 16 years old. And that was, that was very much frowned upon and, you know, still is. Um, but the thing is, when I had my son, I was offered, after a period of time, um, I was offered um, a council accommodation. I was 16 years old. My partner, my ex-husband at the time, um was 21 22 at the time mm -hmm. so and he had just got a flat with his sister um and so there wasn't really that amount of space for me but I did I did live with them for for a short period of time until I got my house and once I got my house my husband left that flat and came and and moved in we moved in to the family home mm. and and how it was at the time it was not a matter of oh you just duck and dive and you just get what you can get from the government and rare tete none of that mm. 
-hmm. he was mm -hmm. born he was born here raised in the west indies but his way of life his way of thinking was family you know he's the provider he's going to go out to work you know i have the child i'll stay home keep home and that's very much how he was raised and the thought even the thought of oh you 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 just stay here three nights a week and we can we can do a little a little something something that was like no. no he was like I mean, he's not having that and as a as a female i was just like okay yeah because generally we will take that we if if some if our men are talking sense and i say no no i'm going to look after you mm. we will generally just say okay unless so where did it go wrong then because you know when we look at things like over the years social media has just got from from bad to worse you know, with even like the messages, like when you're like listening to, you know, I hate to say it, but you're listening to like drill music, for instance, and mm -hmm. the way they disrespect women with the lyrics and so forth, what they're doing to them sexually and things like that. You think, my God, sometimes yeah. I, 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 I can't listen to that. I can't yeah, listen no, to that. No. That's, you know, that's, that's not, not that's just not, that's not on, you no. know. Um, and I do ask, I always ask my sons, why do you listen to that crap? What is it teaching you? How is it educating you? You know, and then it makes my job harder because then I've got to make sure that they're on the straight and narrow mm -hmm. because the same way I would I expect to be treated, I would expect them to treat their women as Absolute, well. Absolutely. You know? Do you remember the days when you used to hear, turn that music, turn that racket off, turn it off? Do you remember those days? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I'll tell you one thing. You see, in this house, you see that that music, that drill stuff. It can't play in here, you know. Turn it off. You can. I'm not having it. If they if they've got it in their headphones, I don't know. Mm. But if I hear it, turn it off because I'm not having that disrespectful music in my house. Yeah, I this think is it depends on. I think it depends on the artists as well because there are some of them out there that are actually doing positive messages. Where? Far and few between, yeah. and then you've got a lot of them who ain't. Mm. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm sorry, but I'm not one of these women to be shaking up myself to music when man's telling me what he's going to do from behind. No, yeah, you have to check the because sometimes, listen, there was a track I remember having a conversation like this before. There was a track, um, it was a, a Pharrell, Pharrell song with um, the white guy, can't remember, what, Eminem? not Eminem, no, Eminem. no, no. Flicky, flicky hair. He was married to a black woman. Can't remember. Robin, Th Rob, Rob, Robert Thick or something. Robin, Robin, Robin Slick. I think that's his name. Thicke Robin Slick, one, right? And it was um, the tune was like a Marvin Gaye. Um, they took a mix from it. They actually got sued for that track, but um, that's what I, I wonder one. why. But it was like I know you want it or something. I know you something spot me know you want it. But the video was about they were all young girls and they looked they looked underage and there was a big hoo-ha about it. And you know what? The track is booming. When you when you listen to that in the summertime, you got your roof, the roof is down, the windows down, you're blaring out the bass line. The track, but once I clocked <laughs> the lyrics, I said, no, 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 no. No, mm -hmm. I know you want it. Something so that they're saying it was it was not it wasn't appropriate. And so I had to say no, 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 no. So we as the adults, we have to set the as we were saying earlier, we have to set the 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 president here. We have to be the ones that say, you know, we have to be seen to have values and morals so mm -hmm. that our children can adopt that. Because if we're saying one thing and we're doing another then we become hypocrites. And that's why a lot of young people, these days seem to have a lack of respect for mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. older ones. Mm -hmm, definitely. We, we say we say one thing and we do another. We are Look, not in we, our place. We come from a generation where if we saw an old lady, you're not even old, but an older person to us on the bus, for instance, we'd get up. Mm -hmm. for, tired or not, we'd get up mm -hmm. and tell them and say, come, come, mum, sit down, you sit down. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Even though I put bun in us, it was that respect because it was always that you must have respect for your elders, look out for your elders. Yeah. You know, I remember one time with one of my sons, they, they saw two elderly ladies in the area and one of the ladies, he could see that she was struggling with her bags, bless him, mm -hmm. right? And he just went up to him and goes, do you need any help? And he's with all his friends as well and he walked away from his friends 
and mm -hmm. he said, do you need any help? And she was a bit reluctant. And then when she realised who Sonny was, she went, oh, yes, thank you. And she ha and he helped her to take the bags up to her flat and he mm -hmm. even helped her to put them in the cupboards and the fridge or wherever she needed to put them. And he said, was there anything else you need me to do? And she went, no. And then I remember she rang me and she goes, your son, I love mm -hmm. that boy. And mm -hmm. I said, which one? And then she told me, I said, oh, yeah, him. Yeah, what's he done? And she went, no, he helped me put all my shopping away. This is me. Really? She goes, yeah. yeah. I said, oh. So it does. It warms your heart when you know mm -hmm. that they're going out there and they have that respect for their elders. Absolutely. And then I know some of us will say, don't matter how they behave in the house, because when they're out there, and once they got that respect for their elders, you know your job's half done. Yeah. You know? It's true. It's true. It's and raising true. three sons is hard. It's not it's not a walk in the park because no. they're all different individuals. Different uh, personalities. But the Mar Barnes and Mont the Monta de Bull. La Torians, okay. All right. Well, the, you know, the thing is, bulls are calm, you know. They're calm. Until they explode. Until you trouble you got trouble them. If you trouble a bull, that's when the problem you don't trouble them, you just leave them. You leave, leave them, them in, in, in the green pastures. That's what you yeah, leave, leave them. them. Leave them, let them do their thing. You know, yeah. they are territorial, but if you trouble them, that's when the problem starts. And yeah. you know, you know, we have to we have to recognize that you know, each one of our children have their own personality. But mm -hmm. we also have our personality too. And we have to take as the adults, as the ones who are leading, um, can I join the chat? Who is can I join the chat? I don't know who you are. You have to tell, put your name in and let me know who you are. Because you're saying, can you join the chat? <laughs> we like company, don't we? You can so come, come on. Join the chat. So yeah, that's fine. I just want to know down. who you are. The who is right. To the chat. Um, we can have up to, my Six. name is Sanjay. Okay, so you're new. I don't know you, Sanjay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Hold on, I'm going to get, oh, yeah, it should be here. I'm going to see if I can post this to onto the chat here. Hold on. Because it's supposed to let me. I'm going to try and put the details in. Hold on. Let me see if I can do it from here. All right. Let me see. Welcome, Sanjay. So, so San, you must be part of, well, you, you must be part of one of the groups. I'm guessing it's after dark. Come on in, Sanjay. You're more than welcome. And that's the thing with our, with our crew, you know, with our group. We're all so loving. Yeah. Oh, you're from Jamaica. Oh. All right. So what I'm going to do is... So Sanjay, from Jamaica, are you in the After Dark group? Tell me which group you're in. And then I'm going to just quickly jump over into that group and give the details because I'm trying to share it. And I can't. I'm trying to invite copy okay let's see if it will do it now i'm trying to write in the chat sheena the link yeah. that i sent you can yeah. you can you put that in the chat at all which group um i would say it would be i'm not sure if i'm in a group <laughs> so how did you get on here then <laughs> who me no, I'm just I'm just seeing the, the comments on here. It says I'm not sure if I'm in a group. You must be in a group because it's either or it might be my page. Hi Carleen, how are you doing? Hi Christine Douglas. Hi Selena Holder. Hi Desmond Edwards. How are you doing? And you know, of course, we've got the beautiful Amina on the, the chat as well. Um I can't do it from I'm my end friend. because my computer, is, my computer is just not playing ball right now. Oh, it will play not. ball when we finish talking. Comments. Hold on, let's have a look. It always does. As soon as look. I finish talking, it will be everything will be happy and, and squeaky clean. See? Let me see if I can do it from my phone and I'll share it onto the... 
Okay, she's got off. She's gone. She'll be back. All right, so Sanjay, we're, we're trying to connect you. So, guys, we can have um, up to about eight people on this chat. Um, so, oh, I'm I'm happy to do that. I follow you because of my auntie. Ah, so you're on the main Facebook page probably. Okay, that's cool. I just don't understand why I can't get it up here, but it's not coming up on my page. Well, I'm going to try and get on to you because it says probably because of my auntie. Ah, oh. right. Okay. Nordine, yes, I know Nordine. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. All right. So, okay. So if it's, thanks, Sheena. Sheena's managed to do it on um, the chat on my main page. Um, let me see if I can get on to... Okay, let's do a comment. Let's have a look at these comments. I don't know why this, ah, oh, here we go. Yes, Sanja, all right. All right, so what I'm going to do is this. Oh, Sheena's back. I am going to, ah, I know what I'm going to do. See, Sanja, you, you're really giving me work to do today, but it's all right. Don't worry, it is all right because what happens is, is that we learn. There we go. We learn from these things. And I'm just copying the link here. And you see, this is what I'm saying in terms of technology. What we learn. What we've learned. There we go. There we go. Here's the link. Join. It's there. So there we go. So I put it in there. And there's Sheena. I'm going to put her back in. Right, I'm Delroy. Back. Yeah, you're back. Hi, Delroy. How are you doing? Thanks for being here as well. I know you were here earlier on this morning. So yeah, so we're just having we're just having a chat on this bank holiday Monday because we can. We can. So Sandra, I've sent you the link. All you do is you click on that link and it should bring you um, into the chat with us. And like I say, Delroy, um, if you just join in and you want to jump in, I've put the link in the chat. All right. And the link is in the chat in the main on my main page as well. All right. So if you want to join us, you can. You're fair. I hope I put that on the right page. You put it on my main page. It's fine. Yeah, it's okay. fine. It's fine there. Um, Carlene's okay, cool. there and Christine is there. Um, Amina's there, so if Amina wants to jump in, she can as well. All right, so because we are having this this um, conversation um, about you know how how we were raised, how the different dynamics to how we were raised, and and how it is really affecting um, our community. I really want us to to learn. And, and to grow and develop. That is my heart. And that's one of the reasons why. No, it's not. It's You can use it on your phones as well. I've just seen a message. It says, yeah, that's fine. You can use it on your phone as well, um, Sanjay. That's fine. Mm. Um, yeah, because I use my phone as well. I was using my phone yesterday. So I know it works on the phone as well. So, you know, when I think about my parents and how they were and all of that kind of thing and how it's you know because I think considering I grew up in a single parent home you come up marvelously splendidly well very splendid um yes, from a fun. patriarchal perspective as well because most are coming from a matriarchal perspective but mine is from a patriarchal yeah perspective because of my dad but mm -hmm. you know um, you know, it's 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 been difficult. It was it was a difficult transition for me. But what I what I did learn and what was has been very evident throughout my life is values. Yeah, valuing the family unit, valuing that time with my children, valuing how we interact with each other. Because there's there's no shouting after or. We, it's a, my household is a very calm household. Mm -hmm. And my, my children um, will, will lay testament to that. Um, mm -hmm. 
you know, my children will will um, lay testament to that. So I think that, so even though in, in our household, it was very much, um, my dad was very much, you must study your book. <laughs> he never knew what we were studying, study your book. Go read your book. What book is that? Whatever book you have, study it, read it, do whatever you need with it. But... The Bible. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, isn't it? <laughs> if you so much as said that word bored, Jesus. She, that yeah, was like you said the word bored. Go find the Bible and read the Bible. <laughs> that will make that will stop the boredom. Hello. Yes. So we're, we're mm-hmm. welcoming Sanjay. Sanjay's from Jamaica. Hi. Hello, Sanjay. Sorry for the look. Listen, don't worry about that. You should have seen us earlier on, you know. You should have seen us. We look like the morning. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I was just awake and I tuned into your program, right? Mm-hmm. Well, you made some points that I wanted to um, touch on. Based on their culture difference and you may have the younger persons where you would say like, certain music they are not supposed to listen to and so forth like that. Sometimes it's not to be so hard on them, so to speak, not to say you want to them to differ from the morals and value of their self, but also you would be able to give them an opportunity to be able to experience certain things so that they can make sense from the nonsense that you would mm. claim that it's nonsense. Instead of being, um, being, I'd say, hit them away from the reality that is out there then. Give them an opportunity to make a mistake. I hope that they can be able to come back from a mistake instead of being so protective of them that if they make the mistake, you in yourself is disappointed instead of give them the chance that they can be better even though they make a mistake. Uh, for instance, I heard that you said your first son, um, Yovan, right? I'm pronouncing the name good. Who, me? Yeah. Yvon. Yes. Yvon. All right. Mm-hmm. So that you had your child at 16. That's right. Which, which, not saying that you did, as you were saying, you grew up in a proper home which all the values and core values was there. But at the end of the day, when you're on your own, because your parents blocked you from certain things, when you go out there, you want to experience certain things. Right? Despite you get the proper guidance and so forth like that. You want to experience certain things. And then you made your mistake, not saying that they did something bad, but maybe at the age of what happened, but nobody didn't condemn you or anything like that, but you are a better person. Oh, I was no, condemned. Than you were then. <laughs> right? Oh, I was condemned, trust me. Yeah, yeah. So, I think maybe, maybe I should explain the situation a bit better as well, because it wasn't so much as, um, my mother died when I was 11, so I grew up with my dad, and my dad, even though he was there, he wasn't present. So I raised myself and my brother. So in terms of some of the things, some of the values that I that that was should have been in place, it wasn't in place. Um, I I learned that through the process of having my son, which I agree with you. There are some mistakes you have to allow your children to grow, but in terms of, I think that there are some things that that prevention is better than cure. And I do so, believe that. Um, that that's, the, that's the number one thing we, yeah. we always say. Prevention yeah. is better than cure. But sometimes, yeah. if you don't have prevention, if you didn't use the prevention, you wouldn't have no cure. But mm-hmm. advice the person. Yeah. So, I think we, we all have to, we, we all have to grow. There are certain things. I mean, I would never change. I would never change my life now. My son mm-hmm. is an amazing <clears throat> young man. This, uh, and even after at the, that age at 16 of having him, I would not have, there was no regret. Mm. But what I will say in that time um, is that my my ex-husband, which is his dad, had the same kind of morals 
and values that my mother had from the Caribbean. And so when, when I did fall pregnant, it was like, right, okay, so you're pregnant and this is what's going to happen. He took responsibility fully and played full out and still does. He's still very much part of my son. They have a brilliant relationship um, between my son and, and his dad. Whereas, and I put that down to the Caribbean being raised that way because my son's dad was born here but grew up in the Caribbean. So his values for the family, completely different to some of the English, British guys that are from here. Because mm. uh, many of them just go on, go on. And I'm not saying that it doesn't happen in the Caribbean. I'm not saying that. But the old school values he had and still does have. And that's what the one thing that I value. Well, um, as a point that um, your old um, your co host had made pertaining to um, the, um, as a younger person growing up, if you say a older person, you will give them a seat. Mm -hmm. I am a part of the 80s to current, right? So I've experienced certain old culture pertaining to now. All right. The culture is kind of shifted in so many aspects. And I've never traveled before. So I know that in England, there's a lot of Jamaican is there. But based on our culture here, the culture is shifted. And sometimes I can't talk based on our culture what I'm experiencing here in Jamaica. There's a lot of, our, we respect all the persons, right? And that's, there's no doubt. Because as a young person, you would like to live as long as they live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have some old persons doesn't really happy to see younger persons. It's like their respect is lost because they look at young young persons as a bad apple. Right? Mm -hmm. Remember, they were coming from our stage where older person would look at them at the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So them don't really look into it and say life is a process that is a stage and it, we need help as a younger generation despite it's not everybody you can help or everybody you can instill certain values or encourage. Some person you just have to left alone. That's just mm -hmm. life. So as a young person, sometimes all the older person perceive themselves to us Sometimes we feel disrespected by that. And sometimes we look at it and say, they don't like our generation, right? They, lo they don't like us. So we just build that mechanism within us that we don't care. We just do what we have to do. But we're going to see some older person that it's very vibrant, personality, joyful. And then we stop and talk to you and then you help them, but it's not all the older person you're going to help because some of them is very rude, disrespectful. Some of them don't have any manners or so forth like that, as you can know. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it come with the age or there was just built that, that from ever since. That uh, again might be from how they, how they were raised and how they lived their life as well. Mm -hmm. You know? But my question is, do you, do, because, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. And I really believe nothing not new under the sun. So, in terms of growing up, when I was growing up, there were older people that I didn't think liked me or us or our generation, but we still had a level of respect regardless of how they behaved because it was instilled in us to be respectful of elders. It was like, come what may, you yeah. just, you just respectful. But whereas the younger generation now, they're not, they're not the same. And they are rude and they are disrespectful. The young, I've seen some younger people act out unnecessary to elderly because they are old and they feel like, child, your days are gone already. So you're, you're a has-been. So I think that there has to be a balance here and each person needs to know their place. And, and that's what, true. What, what, that, what their value is and live by their value, but also know your place. 
know your place as an older person. You know, they've they've walked the and I'm not saying that you must let people get away with being rude, but sometimes it's it's sometimes it's better to just just mark them. You, you know them thing that you just mm, mark them mm. and you just go about your business. To this not, day, I will still not. do things like open the, you know, I'll still open the door and, you know, I might not necessarily be in the person, but I'll still have that manners and respects to say hello to them and are you all right, carry on walking, you know, or, you know, you, you just have that general respect. If you see them struggling, you need a bit of help, my darling. If they say no, okay, you have a good day. You just have that, the minimum. It's got, you know, have that basic respect. respect. Yeah, We respect still have that in minimum. us, but like you said as well I mean I see a lot of the youngsters and it, it's actually I don't know if, it, if I feel embarrassed or just feel so disappointed when I see what I see you know um in, the other day I saw all. this young boy he um he, he was on his scooter mm -hmm. and he crossed the road in the scooter he saw the car coming but he still carried on and he nearly caused a collision but the woman had to stop abruptly and then the car behind had to stop abruptly so you've got people blowing their horns and the woman's there pointing and you know what turn him off kind of thing and he stuck his middle finger up at her this was an old an elderly lady and he stuck his middle finger up at her but he was the one in the wrong in the wrong that's you know? that's everywhere if out here if all there and you make it cringe are, man they are the right they are the right yeah so you and are the one supposed to be the one that's supposed to give them way when mm -hmm. they are doing their stupidness. And you know, next thing, all right, growing up, not only to elders, but from there was adult who used to address them as sir. When I was growing up, I, the only time I I pronounced my mother's full name is either we are writing that on paper or my <laughs> grandmother. It's mother, yeah. it's mommy, auntie, grandmother, uh, grandma, grandfather. Mm -hmm. Never the right name. I know I hear kids calling like if I am the dad, Sanjay, uh, Yvonne, or whatever. The name is. There's no mummy anymore. Mm -hmm. Because everybody is like on the same level nowadays. It's mm -hmm. like you don't differentiate that's a mother from a friend. Mm -hmm. Everybody is just on one level. Yeah. And even now, growing up, I still call person sir, mom, and them are tell you, say, them not old are, them still young, so just adjust them by the name. But I have that value from ever since. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. Some of the music that you say you wouldn't, you wouldn't like. We call it your drill music. Drill. You call drill it music. Drill. We we call it dancer, right? Oh, all it's right. different. No, drill right. is different to dancehall. It's dancehall, yes, yeah, different, different music. No, we, we listen, no, we call, no. Remember, every culture is different. You call it drill. Mm -hmm. We have our music that we call dancer, which oh, have the same. Yeah. The song that you was talking about is Bro Line. Uh, it named Bro Line. That's featuring um Farrell and um Robin Thicke. The song that you yeah. was talking about. Yeah. All right. We, uh, we have a variety of musicians out here, artists that sing derogatory music. I listen to them. I enjoy listening to them. Not going to be a hypocrite where that is concerned. I do listen to them. Yeah, they, they sing about sexuality, some sing about violence, some sing about money, vanity, which, mm. as, a, as again, the, the culture has shifted. When I was growing up, I didn't want to hear the the older music growing up because I think it was too old fashioned for me. I wanted to hear the nowadays dance all right. Growing up now and to reach into the stage that I'm um at now I learned to appreciate both sides of the music now. I have time now you want to listen to some positive music to relax your, yourself. Then for the atmosphere now you want to listen to a different type of music. Not say I agree with some of the words that they say, but they say music is an art, and then the the beat is something that is very catchy, and sometimes the beat causes you to kind of have a vibe, right? Mm -hmm. Not saying that I agree with the music that they say, but in everything you look, sex sells. If 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 them um 
advertising food, they use sex yes, in selling sell it. Mm -hmm. Right? So in every way that you turn, sex is like one of the number one things. So if you don't hear it in the music, you will see it visually. Mm -hmm. Or you, put, you see it, on a, which is visually, on a billboard or so forth like that. So Put it this way, there's lots, it, nothing left to the imagination now. Nothing. Exactly. So I understand you say you only want certain music to play in your house, which is not you supposed to be the one that say you don't want it to play in your house. But mm -hmm. the child, the child in itself is supposed to say, All right, then my mom is here, or my dad is here, and mm -hmm. my auntie is here. I'm not gonna play certain music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm in their space yeah mm -hmm. when they're not there them can do what they want right. yes. so in case they come, yeah instead of is is we have a saying like that we have a saying here saying like you're mr dog in front of me but when you're not there you're a dog right meaning that i have respect for you when you're there but it's kind of pretending mm -hmm. but when you're not mm -hmm. there you don't do get no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I get sometimes that. instead of being like harsh on them, you like you say you can listen to music, but mm -hmm. you don't have to be a part of the music or becomes what the music is saying. Because mm -hmm. I do listen to music. I don't beat women. I don't mm -hmm. discriminate them. Sometimes. We are human beings, and sometimes when you reach to a quarrel, sometimes you want to put out your ego there. So sometimes you may say something derogatory, both male or female, because you're a human being. And when you want to cuss somebody or having a quarrel with somebody, you tell them something that's going to hurt them, kind of mm -hmm. de to defeat them if you're not being physical with them, so mm -hmm. that they can either leave a space or whatever. Because you're a human being, you're like, so, um, um, we all want to be like Christ, but it's impossible. So, we're going to say things to her people or to do things that to, but at the end of the day, you're gonna, you want to show them that you can listen to those music and that become what the music is saying. And mm -hmm. we, as young people, tend to try to live the life that we see some of these entertainers doing and that messed us up in so many different ways. Sometimes mm -hmm. we don't realize that all that they're doing is for entertainment. Mm. Some people doesn't have the, <clears throat> the, 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 what you call it, the, the morals that yeah, can moral compass, yeah. be strong in themselves to hold out to not doing certain things, but to work for certain things. That's mm. why I find so many shifts in society where this person gone over this, or that person gone over this, or because nobody don't want to work anymore. Mm. Everybody wants an easy way out. You understand? Yeah. So yeah. You just have to, like, don't be so hard on them. You can listen to music. You don't have to tattoo up yourself. You don't have to demonize itself or I think, anything. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, but for me, with three sons in the house, they all got different genres, yeah? Now, they do like the drill and there's some there's some nice drill because even I'll be there going, what? This tune is wicked and I'll be rocking to it. And then other ones I'll be hearing, I'll be like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Lower, lower, lower that, I don't want to hear that, I don't want to hear that, mm. I don't want to hear that, you know? But the majority yeah. I hear, I'm like bubbling to it, going, what? And I'm like, turn it up, man, turn it up. <clears throat> and then there's others. It's so explicit. Not that it makes me uncomfortable, but I just don't like hearing what's coming out of their mouth. And the videos as well, when they're, they're glorifying drugs and money and, you know, guns exactly. and just... all of that. You know, to me, mm -hmm. that's wrong. That's, you know, where? how does that make us look? You know, how does that make us as black people look when we're at when we're like sort of like glorifying guns and drugs you know but 
you know, you know, sometimes <laughs> we as black people were supposed to be blamed like a hundred percent. Because some of these things, we are the one that cast it, you know. We don't try to live in love. We try to fight each other. Yeah. And we have the same race. Yeah. And this we is lack yeah. love. We lack That's love. That's right. We're right. And and That's this is what we're talking. This is this is a, this is the crux of the conversation. It is about so it's about self-love, but it's also about self-awareness and being aware of what love looks like. Mm-hmm. To us, and, and so and we, thing, yeah, go on. You know, next thing, we always try to point fingers when people call us niggas or call us this. I don't have a problem if you call me a nigger. I don't have a problem if you call me black, because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, whether you're white, brown, or pink, you do everything that I've done. You have to use the bathroom. You have to go to sleep. You have to do everything to relax yourself as much as what I do for myself. Mm-hmm. Right, if if you eat steak and I eat rice alone, it's one aim, and the aim is to fill your belly mm-hmm. and to live to see another day. So at no given time, you're in a better place than me. You may have more money and more position mm-hmm. than me, but at the end of the day, you don't have nothing more than life. You mm-hmm. have life, I have life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So, and, that's, and that is valuable. That is very, I love, that is the, the, I love the way you, I love the way that you look at it, uh, the, and it's the truth. It is. For it's me, the absolute truth. I don't really care about racism or whatever. Because the other day, you have people who come to our culture, and they feel more love than where they go anywhere else in the world. Mm. Jamaica is a place that accepts you whether you're black, white, or pink. Mm-hmm. And meeting a lot of persons come here. They feel like they are visiting a country instead of as to we coming to another country. If you come to another country, you just come like a local. When you come here, you're, 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 you're like a tourist here. Worse right. if you come in the, the in the space outside of the hotel, like you really want to be a part of the culture. You realize you meet a lot of persons who want to show you around, be a part mm-hmm. of the culture, right? We don't have the time for tell you say oh. You're white, you're black artist. Right. Maybe people still do that. But at the end of the day, yeah, I don't the, really be deterred by certain things. Yeah. I don't really we, watch my skin color. I love my mm-hmm. skin color. If I should born again, I would beg God for putting me on the scene. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, I've learned so many things. <laughs> Depressed. Yeah. 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 I've learned so many things. Green and black. appreciate me. Mm-hmm. More than what you can discriminate me. I've I've right. never born in slavery, so you can't tell me about slavery. You understand? I've never mm-hmm. born in a slavery. Everything that was come down to me is history. Meaning that I want to learn history because we were in school. And right, I think so I some it. conversation that you you you're gonna have in the, the future and you have a little history. So like conversation like this, now you can use cross reference to say, all right, mm-hmm. then certain things in history you learned but if history wasn't there i wasn't in a shackler or anything like that mm-hmm. maybe we wouldn't put to govern us right now that's a, they are the only person that is oppressing us right now because they're not being transparent in the ways that we want them to be so now you see with what you said your 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 mindset is not the same as a lot of black men here I'm just going to say that older and younger, mm-hmm. you have more of a kingly mindset that the race you don't that doesn't affect you. And I think when you live in a place where the majority of people that you see look like you, you have a different outlook on life. Whereas where we live here, the majority of people that we are around do not look like us, and so we are the minority in this country and a lot of people use oh because I'm black oh because of slavery oh because but I understand to a degree why that's done it's because when I look on places like YouTube and I see people doing programs and they're they're talking about racism and they're not racist and then and they're behaving a certain way that is blatantly 
racist and they're condemning black people or there's been a lot of um uh, violence towards Asian, especially towards the Chinese looking people in this country. Um, there's been violence towards black people in this country. I mean, my daughter was just telling me one of her, her housemates can't even go out. My God. She's, she's um, from Filipino descent. She can't even go out the house because of the amount of abuse. Um, and that's up in Coventry that, that she has been um, subjected to so we know that these things they do exist I mean George Floyd is having his trial now that's in America mm. where the policeman mm. put his knee on his neck and even though the man couldn't breathe the man continued he continued when the ambulance turned up <clears throat> he still continued that is a person who's got a major issue with color you, you you can't put it down to anything else. And the fact that, you know, it, 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 I mean, just going on to the trial that, you know, talking about him having drugs in his system is irrelevant. You know, would he have survived any longer with that knee on his neck if he hadn't have had the drugs? That's a question to ask. Maybe he would have survived a minute longer, a second mm. longer. Who's to know? Or maybe not. We just don't know. The fact of the matter is we know that it exists, but it is about our mindset. And one of the things that we're having an issue with here, it's not so much an issue, there, there are lots of disparities between black men and black women, which is ultimately what my show is about. I run a, a relationship show in the evening. I don't know if you know this. On a Tuesday evening called After Dark. And we talk about um, lots of different issues in regards to relationships. And one of the things that we've been covering over recent weeks are the hidden issues in re relationship, in particularly um, the hidden issues between black men and black women. And um, what we're finding is, is that when both don't listen, one, one of the things that the show has highlighted for the whole year is that men and women listen differently. They hear, they hear and listen differently. Mm. Second thing we've, we we realize is is that that there are some black men who speak very negatively about black women, and then on the flip side of that, there are some black women who have such a low expectation of the black man that it causes a rift in between their relationships. So we're trying to find out how we can bring about some kind of balance mm. to this. And when you were talking about you, you, the colour and you're, you're a man and, you, you, you know, your morals, and the, this is the type of, of conversation that most black women would like to have with men here. Because, yes, we know about slavery. Yes, we know that there's been oppression. Yes, we know that because we live here too, mm -hmm. right? And we've, we've suffered our own stuff. But our thing is, how do we bring this together? How do we now, you know, meet new men who do respect black women, who do show them the love and the honour that they, they deserve, you know? We, but then, and then I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to throw it back out to you too. And then, but then you also have to consider that a lot of English black women have started relationships with men in the Caribbean abroad. And then when the men have come here, they just want a ticket. And so behave badly in a lot of cases, and more often than not, they bring, come over and they, beha they behave terribly and then end up having relationships with other people. And so the black woman is then hurt again, left again, feels abandoned, um, resentful of men. So not only is it the black English men, but it's now the black Caribbean men. So, and I know you're a young one. How old are you? I'm 36. All right then, we can talk. Because oh. you are a grown man, that's right, 36. So what do you say to that? I, as you as say, it's kind of culture different. And when you're talking about the Caribbean, I can't really talk much 
about other places more than Just Jamaica because right. I will travel. I will travel um certain place. All right. All right. I want to say black woman, but I would just say woman in general because I don't want the other people think that I'm kind of anything, but I want to make a point quick and fast. All right. From where I'm at, right, they have good woman here of darker skin. And then you have woman here that is society driven. So nowadays, love is a very weird word. It's very weird. Right, you will say somebody love you, but question you need to question yourself, asking yourself what they love you for, what do you possess that they love you? Because these female nowadays are so society driven, like if you don't have certain amount of things, they don't want you, or they want you to use her for opportunity, right? So you don't really find love so that's why you find maybe black men losing faith in women and it vice versa because you have some man out there that is opportunists also as well as the woman so sometimes to find a woman with value or find a man with value sometimes it, it it makes it, it gives you so many work to do that sometimes you feel tired to even to search to find a good woman. So sometimes that's where the balance break down. Right? And when some man gets a good woman or farm full light, we don't appreciate it. And as I say, it's still vice versa. There are some women who find a good man mm -hmm. and don't know what to do right and there are some people that have been through a lot that when they get a relationship they don't know what to do or what to expect some of some people are so insecure that they don't know whether it's love or just there so that breakdown comes where that is concerned so it's kind of hard but the balance is shift where society is concerned. Because okay. the demands are very high. Expectation is very high. So it kind of, you find a man and you expect him to do this and do that. And if you don't meet the expectation, you kind of feel disappointed. Mm -hmm. And then when you feel disappointed, you start bring out a different attitude that is not compatible with the person that is trying to give you love. So based on your attitude, you blocked out what the person is doing and you're not appreciative and it vice versa. So sometimes it's just that we just need to go in a relationship for the right reason. Right. And I think I think you're correct there in terms of the the what we the the want in the expectation. I think sometimes, you know, there's a saying that, you know, my mother used to say, you don't put your hat where your hand can't reach. Right. And right. sometimes, sometimes I think that there are men and women who, and, and we've experienced this because we watched a guy called uh, Kevin Samuels. And I'm going to use him as an example because I don't really like him, but he, he just popped to mind. I don't like how he demoralizes and degrades people. I don't like that. I think it's unnecessary. So that's my disclaimer out there. He spoke to a woman and he said to her, she's below average at best, right? It's a viral video, right? And that's, but that's, you know, that's according to his opinion now this woman was saying that she's a six-figure earner she wants to meet a man who's a six-figure earner so basically what she's saying is she wants like for like right yeah. now now i don't see personally i don't see anything wrong with her saying that she wants like for like she's worked her way up she wants to be with somebody that's the same 
financial status because more often than not, if you're at that financial status, then sometimes in the in more more often than not, mentally they'll be at the same kind of place in their life as well. It will kind of they would be. So I think I think that when we are in relationships, sometimes there are times, and I know that I've experienced. So I'm just going to lay it out flat. There are times when you meet somebody and you know that that person is not compatible with you. You know, but you like them and you think, oh, they're all right, blah, blah. And you go with it, but you already know in your spirit, in your heart, in your mind that that person is not the right person for you. You know it, but you go that, along that with it. That is true. That is very, very right? true. And you I can, go along I can relate it. to that. I can relate to that as well, mm. where you, you know, I've met someone in the past, like you said, you like them, you know, it could, I don't know, just how they talk at the time, they could be just bubbling with you and you feel, oh, this person's really nice, I like them. But, you know, deep down in your heart that they're not really for you. That's not the long term. That's not yeah. the partner. That's not the one that's going to be around. But you like them as people. And you. And I know men that have done this and women, mm. that have done, this is human nature. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't it be better yes, if no. we were just honest and just say, you know what? I like you as a friend. Yes, no. Yeah, I've I've done that. Yes, I've no. had to turn and say I like you as a friend and I can't take it any further. And that's it. Yes, Don't go yes. down that road. But what happens is we do and then then it's like, oh, but I want you know, he doesn't earn this. Or she doesn't do this. She can't cook. He don't do this. And it's all the stuff, the nitpicking. And these are where relationships break down. And this is where disappointment comes into it. And I think we, as individuals, need to take responsibility for you who You also we know, are. don't you, if you can work no. with that person in terms of, you know, um, all right, there were certain things I couldn't cook. And my partner's a very good cook, Right. And I wasn't one of these women's like, oh, I can cook and I know how to do it. I was quite happy for him to show me how to do things. There's not a lot of women who are quite accepting to that because they feel a little bit, you know, he's a man, you know, coming and telling me how to cook. And if you don't like my food, you should have known that from the beginning. My partner didn't have a problem with my cooking. I just didn't know how to do certain things properly. And, I, and he would help me and show me now my boss lady at it. And that's because he helped me and he taught me. And I was happy to take that nurturing. You know, because for us, our relationship was, it was concrete. We, we pretty much knew it, you know. But in previous relationships, I could say, you just know from the beginning it's not for you. And then you say, you know what, I like you more as a friend. I don't have that same connection, you know, and you're adults about it. And we're still friends. We're still friends it's because we're adults. It's a question. As a feeling for you, you know, a question, or would you know at which point you would know that this guy is not for you? Before or after sex? Question. Before. You know before. before. You know before. You know yeah. before. Yeah. You know. It, it's never a case that everything is okay until that point. Or what signs you see before then? The only way that you wouldn't see before is if it was sex on the first night, mm. right? If it's like sex on the, you meet the person like we met now and in within, within the next few hours with their punnet, then yeah. But from when you are building a relationship with somebody and you're talking to somebody and you're getting to know them, you know, mm. you know, and, and I'll, I'll say that, and I, again, I'm going to, I'm going to put myself out there. I am dating, right? And I'm I'm dating a, a few. There's a few men that I'm talking to, right? And getting to know. And there's one in particular who <clears throat> likes to cook. He likes to cook for me, right? Really nice guy. Nice enough man. And cooks very, very well. And, you know, that's a box of sticks. I, you know, I like a man who can cook. Carmelite food. Right, look, by me, you're not semi like food, me like food, right? <laughs> so, but I know in God terms bless of the food. God, listen, the food, good, you see, anyway. God but I know, food. and I've known, and 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 just to be honest, I've known from the very beginning 
literally maybe second third meeting in this person is not the person for me in a relationship and mm. i'll tell you why it doesn't communicate very well there you have it simple. right there the communication and it's a small thing it's that, but it's yeah. very simple because i know me and i know what i want i know what i like and i know what what stimulates me as a mm -hmm. woman conversation is and very and question no. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that guy can be the guy for you. No. As point. I know, hold on up. Hold on. <laughs> you see, it's in life. I'm going to use a shopping. You go out there and you buy a new shoes, right? Mm -hmm. You like that new shoes, right? Mm -hmm. You wear that new shoes now. Then tomorrow you see another shoes, right? Mm -hmm. You don't longer like that new shoes. Everything when it's new, that give you a kick. It give you a kick. Mm -hmm. Some person come with an intriguing personality that sometimes you need to dig for it. So, sometimes them say it's not everything glitter, it's gold. It's gold, that's right. Right? You have some person that will communicate with you right across from the get-go that doesn't want to leave your presence, right? Until... They bring it in a space that they say, all right, then you give them the opportunity. You give them the opportunity, then communication start break down. Right? Remember, you know, in your process, you, know, you find good things, you know, about that person. You know. But the only thing that makes your thought change is based on communication. Which Absolutely. communication can be able to spark differently. You must say communication have a turn and a half switch, you know. Mm -hmm. It does. Because and it's not all the time you want to be communicating. No. But I hear what you're saying, but I have to say this to that. When you are a high level communicator, you will identify with people who will communicate at not it doesn't have to be the same level but in and around that level the one thing that i realized in my, no, 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 expectation no 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 expectation the one thing that i know i'm going to say this is that living my life the one thing i understand and know for a fact is you cannot change people right you cannot and people will only change to the capacity that they have within them, right? And if a person is not a communicative person, it's not going to change. And if you're in a relationship in the beginning of the relationship, when a person is showing you the best of themselves, because you've got to remember that when you first start seeing somebody, you show them the representative of who most people show the representative of who they are not who they actually are. Mm. And so when you're having conversation, you're talking and someone's saying, you know, we're, we're talking conversation, blah, 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 blah. And the person has got nothing to say, nothing to really contribute to that conversation. There will be an issue. So I know that. And you, and you have to assess each person by their own merit. Mm -hmm. I know that. And it's, and it's not just that. Let me just say that it's not just that. There was a few things. I know that this person and I, are not compatible not on a long term we could have a little something something down the road we can have a little something something that might be nice but it wouldn't be it wouldn't last you know when you know yourself you know and yeah. you have to listen to that voice that's telling you and the, the thing is we don't listen to that voice often enough and that's the one that leads us to all truth i'm um, just before we go any further we've got some comments here um that's not coming up on here um <laughs> this one said, 36, young, he's a young man still. You're young. I said, but you're, you're, you're old enough, you know. Oh, look, everybody are ringing me. Let, I got, that's because of the gospel night last night, you know. Everybody are ringing. Um, Jeanette Barrett, Jeanette Barrett says, blessings to the chef, man. Um, um, them have some, some chance. Oh, you said to communicate intelligence. See, that's me right there. Because some some women, this communication is very, very 
um, attractive. The communication is, is what we need. Um, do you remember though, hun, men don't talk well. I mean, real talk. They take time to talk real. It's all banter and show, show, honey dripping, cupidness. So you literally have to prize it out by then we're tired. We're tired already. And <laughs> I'm tired already. See, the thing is, as well, I, and I get that, but if the banter is not there and mm. the communication is not there, there is nothing there. There's nothing. There's nothing. There has to be something to, to keep you interested, right? When you meet a young lady, there's something about that young lady that's interesting to you. So you'll keep pursuing, you'll keep talking, you'll keep trying to spend time. The, this young man was... This young man was um, and is a very hands-on, nice, and like I said, he's a very nice guy and probably be a nice guy for one of my friends. But for me, he's not. Not, not romantically. We'll be friends. Don't get me wrong. We'll be friends. So, but, so can but I ask that question? Mm -hmm. So can I ask that question? Maybe maybe. Maybe the person who we are in dating with no can maybe get a, a in. So, what attracts you in a guy? What attracts me? Yeah. There's many things that attract me to a guy, but one of the things is um, being able to communicate, to talk well, um, and to hold a conversation with me um that is that's the first and foremost because when you first meet somebody the first thing you do is talk that's they've got really, to be fun as well yeah funny got, i like got someone to be fun. a sense of humor whether it's dry yeah. or not there has to be some sense of humor and the ability to make me laugh is always a good thing and and that is not everybody you know again chef guy was very serious and swore a lot I think I told you that, she? <laughs> I swear, it made me jump, man. The swearing was like, wow. It was like, rah. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, it was funny, but it was, the swearing was funny, but not funny at the time. I'd laugh and I'd leave. You know, if we spent a, a, a piece of time or a conversation on the phone, there would be some swearing in there. That's not really, um, I don't really like that. I, mean, I don't like that. Where is where is the the swearing for me? Um, if it, it really depends, I mean, if they're not swearing at me, that's fine. But it's you know sometimes like when they when like my one's talking and he'll be swearing, and then it'd be like to me it's irrelevant. What are you swearing for? So I I, I will I will just say to him blatantly, what are you swearing for? Mm -hmm. What are you swearing for? And he's like, oh, just I, I, I can't help it. I said, well, I can't help it. Then all of a sudden I don't want to talk to you. And he'd be like, all right, all right, calm, calm, I get it, I get it, you know, mm. because he's mm -hmm. swearing too much. So I'll mm. just, that would be just my comeback on it. And there's other mm. times it don't bother me because mm. of the, how the conversation is and so forth. So I think, it, again, it depends on when you know, when you, how well you know your partner as well. And right, how I was going to say that. Person, yeah, you've got you know? to know them. You, you, for me. You've got to know them. I mean, you've, you've been in a relationship a long time. This is a new thing. Mm -hmm. We're just meeting and, it, it, you know, and when I say... Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's not the... It's, it's, it's the force of the swearing. It's not so much... Mm. The, yes, you know, we all, we all say the odd word here and there, but the, the force of it... And it's like, okay, wow, that's a bit much for me. And, that's, you know, I've just got to be true to me. I don't have to be true to anybody else. I just got to be true to me. Do I like it? No. Did I say to him I didn't like it? I said I just said to him, "You swear a lot, and I I don't appreciate it." Did it stop anything? No. And so therefore, I just keep it moving, isn't it? Mm. It's not, not attractive in the beginning. It's not yeah, attractive you know, in the not, beginning. Yeah, you know? it's you know you have to hear what the you know if he said to me, "Oh, I don't know." Um, I don't know what it could be. If you, you, you say in it a lot or you do something a lot and it's irritating, I'd be on the ball if I liked him enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a little thing. Because little things, you have to, when you're in a relationship, it's give and take, it's compromise. So you can compromise and things like that. But then I had to question to myself, do I want to be in a relationship with this man? 
Because remember, mm. this is this is seeing, this is this is dating, this isn't we're in a relationship. This is do I want to be in a relationship with this man? And my answer is no. Mm. I don't. Whereas in the beginning for me it was all it was all the um it was the conversations was all good. There was no effing and no blinding. Right. And then that come later on when he got more relaxed. And I'd be like, where are you going all this swearing, man? And um, it'd be like, oh, sorry, I can't help it. But when the elders are about now, it could be helped. The P's and Q's were toned. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So to me, it, it can be toned. But then I suppose if you're just if you're just in conversations yourself, it's not so bad. But you don't do it when everyone else is about. If that makes sense. It is. Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's like seasonal. It's like you do it as and when if and when you know what I mean and yeah, yeah. and you have to be like Shh, language man he'd be like oh sorry sorry so then sometimes it just comes out and he, he doesn't actually know he's doing it but then when mm -hmm. I sort of like just remind him he's like oh yeah yeah sorry sorry you know right we've so, got a comment I hear that and, and you're you, you know I hear what you're saying again you're in a relationship but I just yeah. thought this is not this is not for me and I know it's not for me it's not going anywhere you know mm. I don't want to change the man I don't there's nothing there's, you know, I, I don't see that there's any thing drawing me closer to the man apart from the food. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's not enough. Sorry. Yeah, it's, it's not, not enough. <laughs> but here what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, genetic yeah. characters. Communication draws communication. It's like a magnet. Yeah. And someone yeah, else that, says that, that, communication that. is a frequency. It's who you tune into. Yes. Come, Sanjay. That's true, and I don't, and I'm not telling you that is not true. That's number one. Communication is key. From ever <laughs> since from school, lead them to the communication is key. You know, observe from you know, you set a barrier that is very mm -hmm. high for yourself, right? And your barrier is so high that you yourself is not gonna place the barrier any lower for any man that wants you at all, right? which it's a good thing and it's also a bad thing. Reason being, the expectation is very high, right? So sometimes it's very difficult for accept, accept somebody for who they really are than for what you want for yourself, right? Not saying it's a bad thing, you know, but mm -hmm. it can also, on the flip side, Sometimes you can be able to see, like, remember you, you have been doing this all along to the stage that you are at, why you are being single and not married or in a relationship, right? Do you think about, like, trying something different, like, not say you're low in, you're low in your bar, but you're low in your expectation, but you still have your core values and morals that, you want to be in a relationship, but you want to see somebody for who they are, try to understand them more than just for your personal expectation, so to speak. Because everything, everything that you're looking for is more personal, hoping that it can intertwine with the next person that is seeing you that they want to be in a relationship with. Right? So I don't know if you look that way before. Right. I'm going to answer you. Uh, Grace says hi. Grace Campbell says hi, Sanjay. That's my aunt, eh? I know. I That's know. <laughs> I know. And she says, the coast I hate... light up when you listen to that. that. The coast face light know. up. Okay. Oh, bless you. Um, and <laughs> she says, Grace Campbell says, I hate a man who says, Grace, there's a link in here. And Alfonso, because Alfonso's here as well. Alfonso's got a question. There's a link in the thread. I don't know if Sheena can put it back in. Um, to, to, yeah, to, jump, in to jump it's, on, it's to jump on. You can jump in. You can actually jump on onto the chat. Um, but Alfonso, I'll come back to Alfonso's question. Just to answer your your what you said there, Sanjay. I think when you say that I put a barrier that's very high, I don't actually think it's very high. I don't, I think it's no, a standard. I said my observation, you know, not saying yeah, that's yeah, true, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, 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 let's correct that, I'm not saying you, but based yeah. on how you, you speak and your things, I'm just 
assuming mm-hmm. that your barrier is high, high enough, which it, is not wrong. Yeah, I, I don't, no, and I, and I don't take it as, as wrong, and I know it's your observation. I think, I think for me, um, it's it's a normal thing. I think the people who who watch know or watch the shows and watch what I do would know. It, it wouldn't make no sense for me to 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 be there. It 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 just doesn't. It wouldn't be. It, I wouldn't be happy. And there's Shaka nothing worse. Hmm. She got born a big girl, no. She has smoke now. Yeah, she's smoking out there. Anyways. <laughs> 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 yeah, she did what she did. I'm um, Ganja, baby. I'm so sorry. God forgive me. Yeah. Right. So, so, um, yeah. I don't think I. I don't personally think that my 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 um my barriers are high, but I. But because I know who I am, I know who I am, and I've done a lot of work on me, and and really soul searching and knowing. Um, the woman that I have grown into, I'm not prepared to to put myself um, in a relationship that I know is not going to work for me. There's no point. Oh, that's like emotional suicide. Why would I do that? I think, you know, life teaches you a lot of lessons and you have to be willing and, and ready to listen to, to life when it show when it shows you something or when somebody shows you who they are you should believe them don't try and change them believe them and then work with that and I just felt that for this particular person um th- he wasn't for me at all in terms of, of that and and even to to explain the guy when I was explaining to some of my girlfriends about the guy they were like asking me did he have threats or something because of the way in which he, he you know he came across his <laughs> swearing it's just too much I just don't oh. like it I just don't like it great you know nice personality kind of a nice person but not for a intimate relationship and that's the thing there's you can like people but you have to be honest and ask people directly or ask yourself is this a person that I can have an intimate relationship with you've got to be honest and my answer was no and if you're criminal I'm not sure I'm not sure then the not in the not sure is telling you no don't go there. And this is why so many people have relationships that break down and then they want to blame each other. Oh, you did this to me. You did that to me. You did the other. Actually, you knew you shouldn't have gone in that relationship. So take responsibility. You put yourself there. It's not the other person's fault. It's your fault. Or if and you choose to wanna... be in that relationship, yeah. you need to work around it and know how to and work, you know, have a common ground where you work with one another. Because It's about teamwork at the end of the day. You know, right. So a question you from know. Alfonso Clark. Um, I want to ask this question. Why does a woman always choose someone that's going to abuse them over and over again? Well, I think <laughs> when a woman, when a woman constantly chooses the same man with a different name, you hear what I'm saying? She chooses the same man, the same type of man. He just happens to have a different name. To me, it shows that there is a lack of self-worth, a lack of self-awareness, a lack of self-trust, because, you know, you are tr- you're attracting the same kind of person. So the, actually, the, it's we, and I have to take my time and say this, because I'm not saying that an abuser is right. I'm not saying that. There's no excuse for abuse, whether it's a woman to a man or a a man to a woman. No excuse for abuse, right? But again, you heard me talk about responsibility in my head and how I view this. As somebody that has been in 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 a relationship that has that has gone into domestic violence, right? And I've experienced that before in my life. If I'm going, f- if I'm going out with this man, hi, Yvonne. Look how this. beautiful my niece is. <laughs> She's <Look> gorgeous. <laughs> what a beautiful hi. young lady. Hi. <laughs> she does nails and she does eyelashes and all them beauty things as well. Bless her. <laughs> Lovely. 
<laughs> all right i'm on live so i'll oh, take you off yeah. <laughs> all right Sorry, so, so so if so if a, so if a, if a if a woman is with one man who's is abusing her then she goes with another one who's abusing her and then there's another one who's abusing her it becomes a trait then that woman has to look within herself because she is the common denominator and there is something missing in her i'm not saying that the men are not wrong but I'm separating the men from her for a moment because, you know, you, you've got to take responsibility for, for, for where you're at as a human being. So I would say the reason why um, women choose men and get abused over and over again is because they're not, they're not healed. They're not whole. They, they, their relationship, there's a disconnect between the relationship that they have with their greater self. That's my answer to that question do any uh, of you want to come in on that one yeah okay add something to it. all right as i say culture different all right mm -hmm. yeah i'm so as i said yes yeah, several brothers have a different mind right yeah i have some females where feel love by when a man abuse them mm -hmm. follow me Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is where I live where aggression is something that gives some people a kick, right? You have some female way attracted to, to men that is what you call the so-called bad man, mm -hmm. right? Because in their self, they are insecure, very mm -hmm. much insecure. Mm -hmm. So they feel like if they don't be with a man that is bad or abusive, they don't feel love. Mm -hmm. If you're too soft, they don't want you. Mm -hmm. Right? And some female will stick in an abusive relationship and tell you that them can't bother to start over. Them they are this already. Or the man that give them good sex. And them can't bother. You hear all of these things. Right? So, the, the, the self-esteem, they have low self-esteem and they're insecure. So sometimes, when they see them in a that, they leave them. They have to come to senses with themselves. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they don't love themselves. If they don't love themselves, it don't make no sense. And right now, the domestic um, violence is very much on the eye right now. Very much. Very much. Now you realize it. All right, you see, this COVID thing kind of show many of us where a relationship is concerned. Mm -hmm. This lockdown show you how much you love your partner. How much you can tolerate them. Mm -hmm. but right now, I think there's a lot of breakup than bonding now. Holy. Mm. There are relationships because... that have broken down and, and some that have started that are developing really well. Right. Because you think you know the person that you, you was with for years because yes. they used to come in hours. They used to tell you that, oh, I'm down by my friend playing domino or I'm out with my girls or what. No, you have mm -hmm. to be around each other more to see each other personally. Than before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So you realize, say, you never really love the person or the person never love you. Mm -hmm. Or you never really bond because you just know, have spare time for each other. We we'll never really have quality times, but Passing I guess um, that's a big difference. You know, that's actually really key. What you just said there to know the difference, the quality, so I guess, and spare time. Mm. I guess low self esteem is with both person, not only with the the female, because uh, abuser is a very low self esteem also. Because I don't see the reason why you would want to. It's somebody that's supposed to love you and you love that person. 
right? Mm. To abuse that person, give them a lick, a slap, a or whatever. Right, so both personal lack self esteem, so and insecurity. So, I agree. I think we, we, we agreed on, on that question. I hope that answered the question for you, Alfonso Clark. Um, you know, it's about the se sense of self, self worth, self esteem, self acceptance, you know, self love. It's it's all both parties, and, and women will, will gravitate to what they know. Um, just some more of the comments. Um, Janetti says, Han, your barrier is not a barrier. It's the fact that you know who you are and know what you want. Never water down who you are to compromise anyone else. Otherwise, you will grow out from them and there's no point. Be you, stay true and follow through in all you do. Pick up yourself. Um, and Annette Joseph is saying, I have high standards and aim to maintain them. Um, who does not line up with that? Not part of my tribe. All right, who doesn't know that's not part of her tribe? Um, Grace says she's dressed. Come on the live, because we've only we've only got like a few more minutes left. Um Lynette says, I like that if on when you know when you when someone shows you who they are, uh, believe them. That is actually from Maya Angelou, who said that. Um, Janetti saying, choose. They don't choose that man. They have no comparison to another type. Maybe in childhood, they, the men were a certain type. It could, it, and again, it could go back. We were talking about childhood um, on generational things, and, and maybe that could be part of it. Um, for me, I when I said because I like I say have been involved in a domestic violent um, relationship, and I never saw my dad. Um, I never saw my dad hit my mother. Never, and I've always been that I'm nobody's punch bag. Sorry, if you raise your hand, it done. Sorry, I'm not even staying for you're not getting you. You're forgiven, but you you got to go. Bye. That's on me, steer. I, I'm too. I'm only little. I'm only like I'm just about five foot. I, I I can't be anybody's punch bag. Sorry, no. Uh, um, oh, we've got lots of comments. Oh, <laughs> Grace said, I meant to say I'm not dressed. Auntie says you're not coming up. Tonight. <laughs> yeah. Tell her some more. You know, Sanjay, you're a Campbell. So, wait, no. you're, 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 I mean, I'm a Campbell as well, you know, by the way, but we're not related. But I'm a Campbell. No, uh, no. This is off my mother's side. Okay. okay. But we are related because my mother's father is their father. And my mother was a Campbell. She passed away, okay. may God rest her soul. Right. But my auntie. Right. Is... Oh, okay. Right. She's your aunt. So she's an older, older daughter, an older yeah. Campbell. Right. Just your as mom. Nadine and Irene yeah. and. Yeah. There's a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, we know them. <laughs> yeah. Uh okay. Right. Janetti says now they learn the core of the person as well as the regular shell. That's why communication is essential to know the soul essence of each other, not just persona, um, that not just the person that they want to reveal. Okay, so there's uh, uh, uh the comments that we've been having today. I think that we you know, to thine own self be true. We have to get to know who we are. We can't start mm. any relationship. We've got no business starting relationship with anyone. It looks sunny outside, Gina. Um, you know, you don't see how my glasses change. Yeah, because yeah, it was snowing Sunday, earlier. Man. It was snowing here, you know. It was snowing a minute ago. Shh. Not sure. As my it father was, was said, don't swear. Don't was, swear. We don't want to see no more snow. It's fake snow. They want us to stay in for the bank holiday. Good luck to them. <laughs> I ain't staying in today. Tisha says hi, everybody. Hi, hi, Tisha. Listen, we're talking hi, about Tisha. relationships. We're talking about relationships, and I think you know the bottom line is we have to get to a point where we know ourselves. You know, before we even pick up with anybody. And I, I would, you know, just to go back to the conversation that was having before in terms of the person that I was um, dating, the, the chef. You know, I would be doing him a huge disservice and myself 
if I continued that because it, my belly was full. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be honest, isn't it? I, you know, and this is where you'll find I'm very transparent, right? I'm very, very transparent, and I just had to be honest. I go and tell the chef to give some stew peas, some kayo, <laughs> some good stew peas. <laughs> <coughs> well, maybe if he could stew peas, I might not have been so hasty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking now. And like like I say, welcome him to be a friend. I'm very happy for him to be a friend. Um, but in terms of a relationship as a as a intimate relationship, no. no. You just know though. You just you know. know. And you, you know have if that to person's meant to, to be your friend more. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm sure there's plenty of men I could have looked at, you know, years gone by, but they're like brothers to me. They're my friends, you know. They're people who I used to go <laughs> raving with, and that kind of relationship. You know what I mean? But I'd never look at them as having them as a boyfriend or, you know, a man. Mm. Nah. And you have to know that not yeah. every man you're friendly with is your boyfriend, and not mm. every woman you're friendly with is your girlfriend. They're not. They just can be your friend. And people and say, I have "Can some beautiful looking men friend as well?" Me too. But you know, look, but you know, can, sometimes they can remain beautiful. But you know, sometimes, you, you, sometimes you make a mistake too. What kind as of mistake? You you so, sometimes you overlook some people where you put on a friend level where maybe mm -hmm. would be greater to you mm -hmm. than the person that you choose. Because, all right, so for instance, you know, you can meet somebody. And you, you, you never liked them before. And you meet somebody that you instantly become friends of. But that relationship, not me like, in, not relationship as in intimacy, but just friendly. Mm -hmm. And that friendship mm -hmm. went away so quick. And the person that you didn't like in the beginning becomes your best suffering. Mm, that can happen. Which My, does happen. Yeah. My my, I've got quite a few male friends who were put into the friend zone very very quickly, very quickly. But we are bona fide friends. They've married. I've been at their mm. weddings, and and it's been beautiful. And I'm have relationships with their wives. It's been beautiful. You know, at the end of the day, we have to be honest to ourselves first. You have to be honest and just say. Yeah. Is it if do I like this person? You know, one of my one of my good good friends passed away last year, and many people since he's passed away, many people have said to me, "Oh, I thought that you and him was a was an item. You you and him was having a thing, or you know that certain things are gone." And I'm like, he was always just my friend, and we had that conversation, that awkward conversation. Do we like each other more than? we like each other and we both decided actually no we like each other he's my brother I'm his sister and that's how it is and and that's how it was until the day he died and you know do I look back and regret oh should we have had a relationship no because the relationship that we did have was so powerful I would never have wanted any any intimate relationship to come in between that because it was he was a special friend. So I think we do, you know, we have to look at what love is, what kind of love there is, because there is more than one type of love. You know, that you know, there's love that that is as as a family. And you will never love that person more than that. It will never pass the intimacy stage. Never. And I think you've got to start to we as but especially us as in our community, I have to start looking at that because we're there, we're there sleeping with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Not me personally, but I'm just saying. We're so quick to open up the foot and let it in. And then afterwards, everybody are bar, oh, I did this in that work, and, uh, and he did this. And, and then it's like, oh, this woman, she she check me for everything. I did this for her. I, I put up new fence, and I did this, and I did that. And it's all, woe is me. No, you were in a relationship, and at the time you was there, you wanted to do it, shut your mouth. You did it, and just move mm. on. 
and take responsibility for the fact that it didn't work. You tried, it didn't work, move on. Why there has to be this song and dance and drama about every woman and every man? And blah, blah. Look, just get on with it. Get you know that people it. change in their relationship for whatever they reason. They do. You know, and that's when obviously you, you talk and you try to figure out and resolve if you can. If you're, you're in, in a relationship. Your, right. Yeah. And then, so that's different. So you'll, you'll yeah. try and resolve. You might even go through periods where you, you ain't talking to one another. <laughs> you, yeah. You just don't want to talk to each other <laughs> because you just need that space just to calm and cool out for mm. a week. In my case, it could be three weeks. But it's that you that's just need cooler. that space. You just need yeah. that space. Weeks three weeks too long. For yeah. some people, for me, it depends because I'm stubborn. I can hold it for three weeks. I'm going to be real about it. I can hold it. No, but, I will still but, do. But I will still cook and serve. Why, right? I will still, I will, I I can still be submissive. Why. I don't see the reason why I'm supposed to be in a relationship, right? And we under the same roof and vex for three weeks. No, I wouldn't say vex. I wouldn't call it vex. It would be more a case of you, you start, you recognize when you and your partner need a bit of time out. Yeah, time out you, it's just the yeah. time it's that time out just in time to invite some unwanted it depends guests. on the it depends, depends on, on the relationship, relationship. so you know do that in mind so I can do that in mind so I can do that in mind mm -hmm. it's the time that you need somebody else worse if I'm going to work and that person is a good listener I'm just saying you know I'm just being real yeah, that yeah. person is a good listener. That person show you what you are not showing that person at home. So that person tend to start to give that person more attention. So that three weeks that you give that person are the three weeks that the person give you entertain unwanted people. But then again, that, want that just be... shows that just shows you the level of that that person's relationship. You know, for your eye to wander. Whereas in my relationship, I will still wash, cook, clean, tidy house and hang up claws and do what I need to do. And if I'm asked the question, I'll, I'll answer the question and do what I need to do, you know. But he'll know that, you know, I'm not on the speaking frame for a little while because it did upset me about something before. But then it will be, things will still get done. You know, he will still get his dinner on a plate, served to him. Yeah. I will even go the extra mile and run a bath, you know? Okay. Yeah, you know well, it depends on your relationship. So if it depends on the relationship that you guys have in, it shouldn't take you that long to reconcile or sort out things. It shouldn't take three weeks. If you're fixed. I just said I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn. I'm a person, but right? You, if you upset me, I will just, I just won't have much to say to you for a little while. So Sheena, I think you you need to kind of um, let um, Sanjay know how long you've been in your relationship. Eighteen years. Right. Okay. So it it must work for them. It works. It, it, no, we I'm... know that it wouldn't work for you, and it probably wouldn't work for a lot of people. Three weeks, right? Mm. Um, I personally, I if I was living with a man and he weren't talking to me for three weeks, I'd have an issue with that. That's me. But I like com I like communication. So that as we'll still as we communicate in other ways. We'll still communicate in other ways. Yeah. Right. Like like I said, I'll still do the dinner and all of that. Mm -hmm. And he'll like say he'll, he might say to me, "Oh, your car needs washing." I say, "Okay." So what if what if it's a case that he want to have some intimacy with you? He was gonna. I knew you was gonna go there, Sandra. What but... I done one time. <laughs> What I done one time, it only happened once, right? right? Okay, when that came, when that part come, me now, I got up, I put on my stocking foot, I put on a long nighty, and I took out a book and I started to read it. <laughs> but on a regular, that trouble. part, yeah, you are trouble. we will get, you are for yeah, trouble. I'm trouble, but then the trouble is good, it's good sometimes, because then it, when, when you do come together again, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Me now we have a two weeks in them. Yeah, take it right here. All so, right. So Listen, what about got... this, what about the stocking foot and the long nighty day? What about that scenario? Yes, oh, you work with that. 
and the book, the book you come think, out to glasses. You and think so me I go sleep with your side of me and know vividly what I have here, and that was the part you can be. I still give you, you know. I will still give. I will still give. I mean, I, I mean, I refuse, but most of the time, I'm being yeah. honest. So, so I'm he, being honest. He, I've been, I've been, I've been over the long comments. enough. Yeah, we got. Li- we've, we've got what ten minutes, five minutes left. Janetti saying, "I'm with the same man for thirty years and been married for twenty five of them, but we both have male and female friends. Um, so we've learned to love thyself, and all other types will come easier." Um, oh, Janetti said, "Okay, my dinner break done. I haven't eaten. Listening to you. <laughs> oh, Lord." Where's that man friend of yours? I need him to, to cook some food for me. Oh. <laughs> anyway, and then we've got a Facebook user says, sometimes our stature in life can stop. Like that, really, like that. Which one? Like that. Yeah, I'm the just reading it out. Food. Yeah, sometimes our stature in life can stop a happiness in love. Maybe if the bar is lower for the person that makes you feel loved and respected, you might you achieve. feel love respected. You might achieve yeah. a relationship. relationship. The, the, again, I don't know, again, it depends. I, my on the thing person. is, I, I reckon that's a man that wrote that. I'm, I, I don't know who wrote that. Can you, whoever wrote that, can you put your name by it, please? Because you're coming up as Facebook user. Sometimes you, our stature in life my can language. stop your happiness in yeah. love. Because, Maybe if the bar, but, but then who do you this. love? Who do you love more, the person or yourself? Who do no, you love but, most? All right. All right. Sometimes, Who? that's what I say. As I say, as I would say, sometimes I feel in ourselves because that's what I say. Come now. That's as well, the point we make with the racist. Racism. Mm-hmm. Because you have money and status, you feel that like you are better than me, mm-hmm. which is two of us possess life. Mm-hmm. The only thing that we don't possess is that you may have the opportunity of doing more at the time when you need it. Because, say, for instance, you have more money than me. You can get anything that you want when you want it. Mm-hmm. I have to actually work and accumulate the amount of money what I want to do with what I want to do. Mm-hmm. But yet still, I'm still happy with me. So sometimes our status cause us to look at people differently. So uh-huh. we start look for people in our status. Uh-huh. Instead of instead of searching for love and somebody would accept me and you for ourselves. Sometimes it works that way, you know. All right. So mm-hmm. for instance, as the, the person said, they want a person that has six figures. Uh-huh. You're a man. Uh-huh. And I need you, but you're not earning six figures. Mm-hmm. Right? And you are genuinely, you are a genuine person. Mm-hmm. And I see your personality, I see your qualities, I see your, uh, your, your attributes, I see things that define you mm-hmm. as a lady that I would want to get to know, I want to be in a relationship with. And I try. Instead of looking for somebody, are earning six figures that doesn't have the personality and the qualities that you possesses, but yet still you are at a lower income rate. Mm-hmm. That but means this... you're that mean you're not you're not view somebody based on your status. Mm-hmm. As in maybe a woman would look at in you in that way because you are earning six figures and maybe I'm earning. Less uh-huh. than you. You may say, all right, then. As a man, and you are earning more, kind of devalue you. Say, uh-huh. look for somebody in that range. Sometimes it, it's not good. But then th- that's looking at somebody for money. That's, that's the money. But there's the, in terms of status, it, it's more, it's not, it's not money. It's, it's about, for me, and I can only put it about, it's about compatibility. Is whether I'm compatible with you, and that's where because my thing is communication. It's not so much the money; it's can you communicate with me? Where where I I, I want to communicate with you? Are we compatible in that area? Are we compatible? You know, in terms of our mindset, 
because it, there would be no point in me being with somebody who who is happy to just work wherever whatever job they're doing just work and just go to work and come home because I'm a I'm a I'm about business I'm about creating stuff I'm about more the more the more what can we build together what how can we make life easier for us I'm about that person so it, I'm about that kind of life so if I'm with somebody that's not about that life we're not going to be compatible and we're not going to agree mm. two cannot work to walk together unless they are in agreement and that's a fact. It, it, you just it, it just won't work. So for me, it's more about the compatibility, and this is why I, I used the the chef as as the example because clearly, in certain ways, we were not compatible. We were compatible with food, and if it was just the food, and he was going to feed me the food every day and night, and the food, yeah. But no, as a person, <laughs> I would nice go. Yeah, still piece, listen, nice he, he did cook up a piece of fish. You see, that fish was lovely. I could have done with that on Good Friday, but never mind. That's cooked my own. Never mind. That's just how it goes. <laughs> it's just how it goes, right? But the point of the matter is, it's about compatibility for me. And I think, I think, you know, if we can, you know, I know we've gone kind of all the topics have gone all over, we've gone rant full circle, but I think. You know, we do have an issue here in relationships. I love those people who have been in long-term relationships. We have a couple on our show that have been together for 37 years. Um, and they often talk with us. Sheena's another person. She's been in a relationship for 18 years. We've got somebody else who's in it, been in a relationship for, I think it's 17 years. Yeah, 17. So, so we've got, <coughs> sorry, we've got some long-term long -term people in relationships that we need to glean the information from but I think for those who are single and are over the age of 40 because that's who the show caters for really you're single Sanjay yeah 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 because we do have oh, no. we do have younger people in the in the group you do we do and so I'd like Sanjay I'd like to invite you I'd like you to invite you onto the after dark platform um come and join us um if you've got friends who are single that want to join us in Jamaica and they can get on live, come on over and let's talk. I really, I love the fact that you are willing to have conversation. And it's been um, a nice conversation It's as been well. lovely. It's been lovely to meet you. Another family the next member. Time we come by show, make a neat up and look at <laughs> 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 Listen, we've, oh, we've got after we've got an anniversary <laughs> show. We've been going for a year. And it's tomorrow night, um, and it's 10 p.m. British time. So I don't know what time that would be for you. It would be like maybe about five o'clock or something like that. Right, right. now, right now it's um, 10, 8, 10 now in the morning. Okay, in the morning, right. Wow. Like, oh, okay. You're in the p.m. now. I'm in the a.m. now, yeah, you're supposed to be in the p.m. now. We're in the p.m. Yeah. now because it's, it's 10 past it's it's after 10 two. Past two. So yeah. our show is at, it's at 10 p.m. till midnight. Um, we use a platform like this. There's a link as well. But we have a Facebook page and we are also on YouTube. So if you find my YouTube page, you'll see it. You can write your comments in and then afterwards you just come in and chat but I'd like to invite you onto the platform to, to join us we talk every Tuesday uh, most Tuesdays isn't it I've not had a break for ages um, every Tuesday and yeah. yeah and then and we have a private messenger group for the panel um, there's an, a Facebook group for the After Dark members so come in and talk and get to know people and you're very welcome to to join us and thank you guys for having me. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well. It's very been a real well. honour speak. It's been it's been a lovely conversation with you as well, Sanjay. Mm, yeah, well. been good. So thank you. I see you're, you're not you're not frightened. You never run away. You're like, oh man, I'm talking for the men. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Sanjay. Yeah, man. <laughs> yes. Big up yes. the man. Yes. Them. yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we love we, we love our for them, but at the end of the day, sometimes. We mm. as men to kind of make things bad for ourselves to cause mm. is that end of the day, forget a good female. Sometimes we mess it up for another person or another person mess it up for us. True. So sometimes the task kind of very, very difficult to 
Mm. And sometimes female makes it up for yeah, it's another it's, yeah, female. Absolutely. Person. absolutely. So, so we both have to take the blame for a breakdown where good relationship is consistent. Mm-hmm. Is it because we are too ego driven for one. We are too society driven. And we don't we try to seek validation for things. <clears throat> that is not necessary. Or not is where not is not substantial where the growth of a relationship is consistent. Of. We seek too much validation. We seek mm. we seek validation from other people instead of from each other. Cause if you are talking to a female or a, or vice versa, you want validation from your friend, your mm-hmm. family whether you have to talk to that person or not. You're not giving that person that time a day for mm-hmm. yourself. You're mm-hmm. seeking validation from family, friends, or whoever. Everybody else. It's true. Everybody else. So, the kind of breakdown where that is concerned still. So, we have to talk for both persons. But I'm over on the man's side because I'm a male. You're a man. That's and right. Yeah. I'm splitting justice. I'm splitting justice. Yeah, man. You have to talk for who you are. We got one more question, and then we're going to call it a, a, a day. Um, and let you guys have your bank holiday Monday. Um, if you are with someone because he or she is compatible to build business and talk about new ideas, where? Hold on, where? Were so you going, going to find time for you to know his or her inner feelings? Okay, so I think this probably is directed at me. Um, <laughs> right, so the first thing is, right, let's let's be clear. When you first meet somebody, is it about business? No, it's not. Is it about compatibility? Yes, it is. So you, you meet a somebody, for me, you meet somebody, you find out whether or not you're compatible, you talk to them, you have conversation, you laugh, you joke, you meet, you, you greet, you, you spend time. In those conversations, then you are getting to know the person. As the relationship goes on to a more intimate relationship, that's when you get to know about the person's inner feelings. And you make time for that. Um, you know, you know, let me let's make this clear. When I talk about relationships and building stuff, this is not about when you first meet somebody. This is the process of having a relationship. So, for instance, Mich- uh, Michelle and Herbie, who are on our group, they've been together for 37 years, probably married for 34. Have they built something together? Yes, they have. They've built a family. Yeah, they've built their family and they're now building onto their what they're going to be purposing for their retirement or their later stages in life. It's a normal thing. Mm-hmm. If I'm meeting you in my at my age now, if I'm meeting a man now, I, I'm going to be, we are going to be talking about what we want to do later on in life. Mm-hmm. Because there'll be no point in not talking, we, we, we're of an age, we, we, we got to make plans mm-hmm. because we've got, we'll probably both have children <clears throat> from previous relationships, right? Because I certainly won't be having children now, right? And so I'm just keeping it real. So that's off the cards, that's out of the window. So what, how are we gonna, how are we gonna live for our retirement? What, what, where do you see us living? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? These are the questions you have to, about inner feelings. There's, yes, inner feelings that come with it, but there's other things as well. So it is about looking at the compatibility, it's about looking at the whole picture of the relationship. The same way that you want to meet the needs of somebody's inner feelings, your inner feelings need to be met too. It's, this relationship, I, I feel like, I think it's a bit, the question's a bit of a nonsensical question for me, because I just think common sense, let common sense prevail. You know, you'll you'll build, even like with you, Sheena, you've been in your relationship for 18 years, right? Mm-hmm, so you've mm-hmm. been with your partner for 18 years. So 18 years ago, you were not where you are now. That's exactly. the process, it took process to build that. So yeah. now that you're at your age now, your conversation with your partner has to change. 
yeah, it has changed. It has right. changed. It's more about, you know, we're, we're building for the future now, you know, right. our future plans. So we talk about where we want to be in, say, um, five years, God willing, you know. So we're like, plan what we want to do for the next five years. And, you know, that's how you do things. So, yeah, as time goes on, as years, as years pass, your relationship changes from those date nights or in bed all the time, getting the good juices and thing. It, it then comes to the point where you're, you, you're looking at your future, the future of the children, the future of their children. You're looking at everything else, what you're going to leave behind, you know. Um, funeral planning, I don't like the subject, but, you know, it's we've had to talk about funeral planning. You know, uh, especially now when it's, yeah if we're not about you know what what can we leave for the kids so we have all those kind of conversations you know so yeah things change and and it's no different I don't think yeah it's a new relationship but if you're in a new relationship and you're moving on and you've decided me it's me and you right so we yeah. we let's pretend we've made the decision it's me and me and you we're we're, we're building this life together mm-hmm. all right and and this is it now so you have to look at things like about inner inner the inner feelings. I get that, but the inner mm-hmm. feelings right about now, you you get to you get to have those moments when you're alone, but when you're building something, it is about especially for around my age group now, setting those plans for your funeral because why would you want to leave your children in, with your debt? Not at all. You can't right? do it. And these these are the grown up conversations, and I think we have to remember. Not that anyone has said anything. We have to remember that we're not 21. Mm. And sometimes when I have these conversations, generally, I feel like sometimes we forget that we are the elders now. Our position has changed. Not so much yours, Sanjay, because you're coming up after us. You're in your 30s. But, like, I'm in my 50s, right? So... I'm before you. I'm going before you now. You're, but you're coming behind me. So for me, because you're like you're like my son's age, right? So for me now, it's like I have to put these things in place. Why? Why would I leave? I would never want to leave debt for my children. I would never. And if I'm with somebody and we're working together, then I'm saying this is what these are the things that I want to happen. Can you honour that? And mm. I don't see that there's anything wrong with that. I think it's the right thing to do and vice versa. The so, conversations are important though. Um, mm. For real, you have to, you need to be clear in yeah. the decisions that you're both going to be planning moving forward. So for me, yes, the conversation has changed because before it was all about, you know, us having a good time raving and so oh, forth. Gone. Oh, there's no, it's coming back. Yeah, it's coming back, right? So it was all it's all it was all about having a good time, just enjoying life, just enjoying each other, going out places and so forth. So that was good. Now it's more a case of we are sorting out our future, mm. you know, our future plans because you know we've we've got big sons now. My sons are in their twenties, yours are in their thirties. So, yeah, it's about planning for them to make sure that every, not even so much for them, but you're planning to make sure that, like you rightfully said, you're not leaving no debt for them to deal with. You just want to make sure everything's secure so that when time come now and yeah. they have to say their goodbyes to us, everything's already in place. Absolutely. That, that would stress me out more knowing that I hadn't even sat down and discussed it with my partner or considered what the next plan would be so we're no longer on plan a we've now got b c and d everything you know you have there. you have to you have to yeah you know? and it's all there yeah. the comment is communication is when you connect to the person's inner feelings communication is communication whether it's not necessarily their inner feelings, inner feelings. It's, it's, communication yeah. is connection that's it mm-hmm. having that connection mm-hmm. with the person is you know i i'm not sure what the 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 right it means about inner feelings I'm not sure what that means what do you mean by inner feelings we've gone over time Uh, what do you mean by inner feelings because it seems like there's a bit more here Mm. than than what is written so communication is communication and we communicate differently with different parts of our body and words actually is only seven percent of communication Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean 
body the language. language is higher. It's your body language. Yeah. You know. Much higher. 30-odd percent. Yeah. Then we get the body percentage. language is actually a really good, uh, good way to communicate as well. Mm. You know. So that, that, that's just you, isn't it? You're just coming out of yourself and you're just being yeah. you. And you can express you through your body language. Yeah. Know? Well, mm. I do. Like when a three-week like three lockdown, dog. Your body language. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was listen, that's when I'm putting on the prettiest dress, Sanjay. My hair is on point. Listen, that's when I'm on point. So I'm not giving him no excuse to go nowhere because I make sure I'm going for gold, right? Everything is nice. Everything, right? Yeah. So that is his eyes ain't trailing. It can't. It can't. That's sweet me, Sanjay. The three week yeah. lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. Be yes. a body language. Yeah, man. I then brush past me and smell the perfume. It's like, man, swoop. Yes. Mm. So your body language, you can create a lot still with your body language. <laughs> you can still communicate your body language. And I, I still communicate my body language. Maybe not so much with my mouth, but yeah. <laughs> oh, Sanjay, you're sweet. You're sweet me today. I like Sanjay. We like you, know, the three week lockdown. <laughs> yes, Sanjay. We like them talk there. <laughs> Get to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Yes, man. <laughs> oh, my days. Oh. Listen, guys, we've gone, we've gone way over time. Listen, we could probably sit here and chat all day, but I tell you, it's time to go. I don't mind coming yeah. back here a bit later if you want to come back, but I've got, well, go. I've, I've got I've actually got family around now, and true say everyone's coming off this lockdown and we're having people around now. I'm not gonna abuse the day. The day is no. beautiful, it's cold, but yeah, I'm going I've to been enjoy out. it. I've got some work to do, I've got to prepare for tomorrow's show. So I've got some work to do. So uh, yes, maybe yeah. I can help you call what's your show. I don't know. <laughs> well we've got room on the panel you can come on onto the panel it'll be good we need some men on the panel who are willing to talk their truth so it'll be okay, good no, to get no. another perspective as well don't put me on the spot do you know me run no, you're not, <laughs> you're not, you're not. you were put on the spot today and you just you took you you just took the 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 advantage of the opportunity you just done yeah, it you, yeah you, you, done, you just come in and just flowed so mm -hmm. yeah man it's good that to have plan. you here basically you you, you, you you were talking about things that i have experienced because mm -hmm. remember things from the 80s is a little bit different yeah the 2000 right yeah yeah um Despite here in Jamaica in the 80s, where I grew up, not where I was born, but where I grew up, where Auntie Grace, father, and other family came from, we didn't have electricity there. Right. So, so I wasn't, I didn't have, so to speak, I had to walk to school. We used to use wood fire. Mm -hmm. Not I used to use the the iron that you at the at the the fire, fire and then clean off the bottom so that you don't block up your clothes to press. So we had a lot of experience mm -hmm. from back then. So we kind of appreciate life a little bit more than now. We didn't have a lot of technology. So basically your topic was like top my way we knew about so oh. and then i'm just speaking on the younger version of us mm -hmm. where you, you talk about the your drill music oh and, yeah uh, certain models and certain yeah, things so mm -hmm. i would want to i, I wish certain, a little more young person was here so mm. they could relate to that mean the older person are the mothers and the father don't have to be so hard mm. right because back then we used to get a lot of beating you know? mm. yeah As we, we, we mentioned that earlier earlier this morning lick mm -hmm. used to reach you mm -hmm. and with me you know sometimes if they are around certain people when I'm a school and pick me my like say deal with it in a better manner mm. you don't right? have to 
knowing that where I'm coming from, not say I'm gonna learn, uh-huh. but since my command my owner get big, I can do certain things. But I'm still uh-huh. conscious of the fact that certain things I'm gonna do, it's still wrong. Uh-huh. But everything has to be so boisterous and loud and vulgar. Right? Uh-huh. Some things can tone down. Talk to person more. Give them your experience. Tell them, say, you're used to do this. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, hide the truth from them. Make them know the truth. Because men don't know if when you're used to younger, they used to tell you. When we're there in like Jamaica, they used to tell, like, say, woman, you have church or RP, they used to drop from Sky or. Them they used to tell you the fuck, say, yo. Uh-huh. If you have sex without condom or without protection, you will get pregnant and whatever. That is so true. They may, mm. they may used to tell Pitney the truth. Mm. It's true. That's very true. So that means Pitney normally used to just do things and care and I'll, they want to wait until the consequence comes. So right now, you better you being open because if you're not do that, Social media is like one big porn site anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's one big porn site. And the fact that them are trying to push everything down your throat, and you have to accept it, and you can't rebel about certain things, it makes it seem like it's right, which is not right. So mm-hmm. for like for boys and girls growing up, and if you teach them the right and the moral, what you need to show them, show them what them children do is, what is right and what is wrong. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. right now, we see them have a music video out with th- this guy named Little Nas. It's a very sickening music video. Who? who? I don't know who that is. It named Little Nas. Little Nas. Oh, oh, little, little Nas, yeah, yeah. Right. It's very sickening. They mm. see that you're putting that as a public platform. We have my kids coming up. Your kids coming up. Your kids' kids coming up. And as to see those things, make it seem like it's right. You're pushing things to accept for our kids. And when our kid, when you talk about it, it seems like you are discriminating them. Mm. Which I, I think, I think it should be. This thing is one sided. I have a, mm-hmm. I have a voice that I should voice my opinion. Mm-hmm. Also, if I don't yeah. like something, I'm supposed to talk about it, and I don't see why I should be bash for talking the truth. Why you mm-hmm. want to live your life, and I can't live my life, and talk mm-hmm. about the things that I don't want to accept. I don't mm-hmm. have to accept your lifestyle because yeah. you're not you're not accepting my lifestyle. You're putting out things there for my kids, my kids, your kids to see those lifestyles. Mm-hmm. Why it's never the narrative. Keep it private too, it's right? a narrative that wants so, to be pushed, they want to push. So that's why you need to like sit them and show them everything that you need to show them. You have to show them say this is not right. Mm-hmm. This is not right. But at the end of the day, you have a choice. It's to true. Live, mm. Right? But you show them. Even maybe it, it may look away, but be the first to show them, say, oh, this is not right, and this is not wrong. This wrong. is wrong, wrong, and this is right. Mm-hmm. But this is the right way to do it, but you, you got to wait till you reach up for age. Yeah. You do this, but this is wrong, wrong, wrong. This mm-hmm. is the right way, and this is how you should do it. Right, mm-hmm. and if you are going to do it, do it the right way. Mm-hmm. I hear, I hear I you. I hear that. Well, hear that. on that note, this is the last part. I hope that you know the questions were answered. Thank you, everyone who's been on the chat today, and those of you who are going to watch this on the replay. Do you remember to put hashtag replay? Um, when you watch this, so um, but I'd just like to thank my guest, Sheena Campbell. Thank you for having me on the show. It's from Bedfordshire and Sanjay from Jamaica. 
thank you for being <laughs> here and I uh, hope to see you guys. I guess, um, I, guess, I guess we'll be seeing me more often still. So. Yes, oh, that would be lovely. That's good. good, 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 good. Lovely that's connecting, connecting with you and um, we will see you. Um, hopefully you'll be... Um, here tomorrow and we have a party on Saturday to celebrate our first birthday so hopefully you'll be able to attend that as well all right, so, all right I will so always get the notification. you will get the notifications and that's great all right so for now thank you for yeah. being here and we will be back tomorrow between 10 and 12 for the after dark show we will be celebrating the birthday, our birthday all week. So we'll be on here all week. There'll be lives. I should do it live every day at 12, right? Yeah, why not? Live every day at 12, just in celebration of the After Dark show and have it been here for a year. So, all right, yeah, my darling. i someone else on, though, because I'll be at work. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, whoever wants to jump on. Sanjay, if you're here, jump on, and we can continue having great conversations. But for now, have a lovely day. Enjoy your day. And... Um, you too. Eat nice meeting you all. You too. And nice you meeting you, Sanjay. Good food. Eat go I'm going to yes. eat some nice food now that I cook myself. I'm going to eat some nice food now. Stress me now. Auntie Grace, <laughs> don't stress out your nephew. It's all good. All right, guys. Okay. Ciao for now. Take, Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.